The other mismatch, communication services last week up about four and three quarters of a percent. We know it's been one of the leading areas too for US markets. Yet at the same time, you've got the likes of Zuckerberg, Bezos and Thiel all selling out, cashing in uh, some of their very large holdings in these companies. When you see insiders selling their stock and you've had a very strong run already on the markets, particularly in tech, is it time to think about being less greedy and just cashing in, putting some of those chips into, into real money? Well, look, I think, uh, I think it depends on two things. One is, is the time horizon, really. Yes, there can be wobbles ahead. Not entirely sure how much of a predictor that might be of, of a wobble. But also, more generally, when you think about valuations where we are in the cycle, it's probably not the right time uh, to add. Whether one wanted to de-risk significantly, I don't think that's the right call either. So stay invested? Yes, it seems to me that valuations might be sort of demanding in the U.S., but they aren't. In Europe, they are attractive in emerging markets. Also, when you think about uh, the idea of this being sort of a frothy market, I don't think we're there. You don't have the same type of exuberance that you had in 07 with credit or with the retail sector more recently in equities. So I think one is to strike a middle ground, but certainly there's been actually a very strong run and one that is surprised to the upside. What about the geopolitics? I mean, over the weekend, I'll just point out the wall that we saw the Chinese now looking to target more of the big tech stocks out of the United States, the likes of AMD and Intel trying to phase out some U.S. processes from government PCs and services, also looking to, to sideline Microsoft Windows operating system. I mean, these are three big stocks that the market's been looking at very aggressively around the AI cycle. Is it telling you the geopolitics could get worse from here and that could have a, a fairly large impact on China's sales for these companies? I think over the longer term, uh, when you have two superpowers or two very large economies, um, th that tends to happen. We've seen a trade war, if you think about it, we have seen financial tensions of different types, supply chains and so on. Sometimes we are in a phase of, of de-escalation. It's been subsiding actually for quite some time. But then now perhaps we are in a phase of escalation again. That could be an additional factor. So generally speaking, at longer horizon, we're looking more at valuations at the earnings picture, the economic cycle and central banks. But these drivers, which are more, much more difficult to capture, are important too. Um, are there value traps aplenty in Europe? I was very interested in your answer to one of Karen's questions where we, we talked about the valuation discount that Europe has to the United States. And I've looked at, like we all three of us do, it's, it's our job, so we should do, looked at the best in class in Europe. And the best in class in Europe doesn't appear to be cheap anywhere I look. You know, look at the granolas, I look at the companies involved in electrification, what have you. Uh, and that worries me that actually what we're looking at is the aggregate in Europe where there are value traps left, right and centre rather than the best in class, which trades just in line with the US. I think you could make the same example or observation for the US. Yeah, the market has been so yes. concentrated yes. that the rally has been driven by a few stocks, one or two sectors in global equities has been the US driving this. So I could make also the flip side is that there is a lot of market concentration. But yes, at the index level, you would say that valuations in Europe are more like average, while in the US, they are above that. And within that, one needs to be quite granular in both. Yeah.